In this lecture, we will look at certain aspects of boundary work in the context of first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. In the previous lecture, uh, we addressed, or a series of previous lecture, lectures, we addressed various aspects of first law. Okay, so first law, first law of thermodynamics is a way of generalizing work energy theorem that you've seen in uh, mechanics. This is the version of conservation of energy that is applicable to thermodynamic system. Okay, so the central difference between mechanical system and thermodynamical systems is that you have temperature in thermodynamic system. Temperature uh, is not a variable in a mechanical system. So we addressed the forms of first law, sign conventions, and introduced notions of exact and inexact differentials. So we'll be looking at these issues uh, at a deeper level in the, this lecture and the next few lectures. So as we are dealing with thermodynamics, we typically exclude complexities related to mechanics. So these two terms, in most cases, uh, will not be relevant and we'll be mostly focusing on changes in internal energy. So the form of first law, um, we saw was this is the form, and uh, there is a particular sign convention for work uh, when we express the first law in this form. So this also points to the impossibility of perpetual motion machines. Okay, so you cannot uh, get something uh, for nothing, right? So the perpetual motion machines always seems to give certain form of output uh, without uh, putting in something. Okay, so that is. Uh, not possible, and it is proved by the first law of thermodynamics. So we would be looking at uh, pistons. Often we have looked at this in the past. Why piston is of central relevance in the analysis of thermodynamic system because uh, this oscillatory motion of piston can be converted to a circular motion uh, of a wheel, for example. Okay, so this linear motion of piston can be converted to rotatory motion. So that's why a piston has central importance, but the real piston, the real working, uh, which gives rise to this kind of motion involves not, it does not involve any quasi-equilibrium processes. So we have to understand that in thermodynamics, we're really looking at quasi-static uh, processes. These are very different from the real processes, okay, where these motions very fast and there are many, things that are not a characteristic of equilibrium. However, uh, even despite the real processes being very different from what we analyze in, uh, quasi, uh, analyze in thermodynamics, the analysis of quasi-static, quasi-equilibrium uh, processes gives us bounds. Okay? So it will tell, tell us what is the maximum output that you can get from a particular kind of an engine, say. Okay? And then sometimes we want to do some input. Okay, So the work input is required uh, for doing certain other things we will see, like for example, refrigeration and so on. We will look at these things. And the analysis uh, that we do in thermodynamics will tell you the minimum work input that is required for doing certain kinds of uh, process. Right. So, so even though the real process is different, uh, our analysis is going to give some bounds that are very important. So we are going to look at boundary work in this set of uh, uh, slides. So here, what we are looking at is a cylinder with a piston, all right? So, and the work we are talking about is uh, referring to here will be because the moment of this boundary. And this, this entire system is in a particular uh, state wherein there is constant pressure, right? So that makes it easier to define the boundary work. We call this the PDV work. So imagine a pressure uh, of gas to be constant. And because of this constant pressure, when multiplied with this area, gives rise to a force, and this piston moves, okay? so in such a way that the P times A is a constant, gives rise to pressure, and there's a displacement dx, dS. So the boundary work is defined as F dS, 
P A D S. That is, these two things can be combined. The displacement, differential displacement, and area can be combined as P D V. Okay, so this is uh, a form of work, boundary work, which we'll see often in um, thermodynamics. As I said, the moment of a piston is very uh, central to analysis of uh, uh, rotatory motion in, in some ways. Right? So when volume changes uh, in a particular manner from state one to uh, two, you can integrate the boundary work in the following manner. So certain features are important to note. Okay, So what we are trying to look at is a quasi-equilibrium state. So the, all the thermodynamic variables, pressure, temperature, um, are uniform throughout the cylinder. Okay, so if you move this piston very quickly, there won't be uniformity in pressure. Okay, so that's not a quasi-equilibrium process. A lack of uniformity in pressure will give rise to convective flow of gases and so on okay, within this compartment. So that is not, uh, even though that might be a feature of a real process, that's not what we're looking at, looking at in this uh, thermodynamic analysis. So uh, this is the uh, form of first law. We are going to implement uh, bound the expression, this boundary work expression uh, for this. So when volume expands, uh, WPDV, right? This DV is a positive number. So this will be a positive number. So the entire thing will be negative minus W will be negative. Okay. When there's compression, dV is a negative quantity. So work of compression is a negative quantity, and this entire thing will be positive. So when you compress the del because of work interaction, internal energy increases, and the other way around for expansion. So uh, this PDV work being an inexact differential, that is, it is path dependent, is very critical. We'll see uh, why. So for example, here, when we are, let's say you're plotting pressure versus volume. So the PDV is the area under this curve. So if this curve is different, right? So what do you mean by that? This is as we transverse a quasi-static path, in, at each point, we are able to define pressure and volume, right? So this curve defines the set of points you are taking, okay? So if this curve is different, the boundary work is also different, okay? So these are three uh, cases, three different cases where the curves are different and uh, the work, as you can see, is also different. The area under the curve is also different. Okay, so this is very critical in the case of engines. Okay, so in engines, you typically have cyclical processes where you start at one point, you go to another point, uh, which is at a different thermodynamic state. But however, you come back to the same point. So the work interactions involve work done by the system and work done on the system, okay? So because this work is a path differential, uh, the area under these two curves are different and you get net work. So if work were not a path function, this would not have been possible from a cyclical process. This, by this, I mean that net work that you can get from a cyclical processes is because a work is a path function. So this is a, a crucial feature that you have to understand. So what we are going to look at now is uh, different cases uh, so that we can compute uh, the boundary work. So first we will look at a constant volume process. So here uh, you have uh, a container that is heat interactions, uh, but there is a rigid wall for this container. Therefore, volume is set uh, is uh, uh, is the change in volume is zero. So even though the uh, I mean change in volume is zero, even though the pressure uh, decreases because when there is heat that is given out from the system uh, from a wall, via a wall that is rigid, there is a decrease in pressure, but the change in volume is zero. 
So the PD we work is zero. Uh, as opposed to this, we have another case where, let's say you have a heat input to the system. Uh, because of the heat input, the volume increases. So volume increases in, in, in a manner wherein the pressure is a constant. Okay, so pressure is a constant. However, the volume increases. Uh, it is the boundary work is P D V, right? So this is the boundary work, the area under this curve. In this case, it's a straight line. Okay. So uh, pressure re remains as P naught uh, while the volume changes from V1 to V2. So this is often a case we would uh, see many times in, in, in thermodynamics, especially in the analysis of first law. So you can also convert this volume as specific volume as mass times specific volume. And this is the expression for boundary work. There's another case, uh, which is also important, isothermal compression. So why are we looking at these cases? Okay, so you will we'll put together uh, all these different uh, scenarios into the analysis of cyclical processes, which will be very, very important for uh, looking at uh, second law of thermodynamics. So we will look at that next week. So in an isothermal process, uh, for example, if you're looking at an ideal gas, the temperature remains at T naught. So M R T naught is a constant. So you can express pressure in terms of a constant divided by volume. So then we integrate, uh, we substitute this value of pressure in this expression for PdV, uh, and then you get this expression, right? So again, for this constant, uh, we are pull, substituting for this constant, uh, the initial value of pressure and volume, and you can get this ex expression, okay? So this is one scenario for which the exact formula is known. Again, assuming ideal gas behavior. So another kind of, uh, another kind, which is a more general kind, is what we mean by a polytropic process. Uh, it, for most expansion and compression of gases, this expression, PV to the v, v to the power of N is equal to uh, a constant, okay? So, so N and C are different constants. This expression is obeyed for uh, gases undergoing expansion and compression. The value of N uh, and C can be different in different scenarios. For example, in the scenario uh, we saw in the previous case uh, was also different, right? So N, N was uh, one and C was a particular kind of a constant. So you can express pressure uh, in this manner and substituting uh, the, this expression for pressure, we can compute the boundary work. For the particular case of an ideal gas, uh, what you can do is you th this can be substituted by the equation of state for an ideal gas. Okay, so while this is a general expression, if you substitute PV for an ideal gas, you get a more specific uh, expression for an ideal gas alone. Okay, so this is the, one of the most general form of uh, analysis of a boundary work. So various forms of computing boundary work uh, will be used. For example, this is one particular case where this gas is expanding against uh, a spring. Okay, so in so when you are expanding, for example, in the to begin with, in this state, uh, there's uh, equilibrium, force equilibrium. You can uh, you, you have a pist uh, you have let's say even you have a piston with a particular mass and a spring. Okay, so when we are changing the volume, you can uh, uh, the spring constant of a spring is the same. I I will know what is the force due to the mass of the piston and that of the spring, okay? I know that, so suppose it's a harmonic spring, so the resistance offered by the spring is, can we have an exact formula, uh, 
as a Hookean sp spring, that is f is equal to uh, minus kx. Uh, using that expression, I can, that's the force, and I know the area of the piston, I, I can get to the pressure, right? So that will help me uh, get the expression uh, for the uh, boundary work in this particular scenario, right? So I go from uh, this state to this state um, and with certain other constraints, okay? So I can get to, like, for example, I can incorporate uh, the mass of a piston in this case, and I can get uh, what's the work done in this particular uh, scenario, right? So you can, uh, you can sort of, uh, include, uh, in many cases, we may have a piston that is massless, but in certain cases, we can also include uh, a, a piston with a particular mass, and we can analyze such a scenario, um, for example, using a Hookean spring. All right, so let me stop here, and we will um, look at energy balance in the le next lecture. So in this case, we were only looking at boundary work. Thank you.